Okay, so we're on nine and nine says, does the wood three by six beam work for deflection with the loading shown? And then it says the E, uh, which is the modulus of elasticity for Doug fur is 1,900,000. And then it gives the moment of inertia um, for the three by six as 34.66 inches to the fourth. Yeah. So this is fun stuff. There you go. This is this is an exciting one. Uh, <laughs> so, so check out that uh, that formula yep, over there. Yeah. So here is your deflection formula. It's five WL to the fourth over three eighty four EI. And I know it looks like it's a little crazy, but it, it's not too bad. We can plug everything in and take a look at what the result is. So the five and the three eighty four are constants. That's just part of the equation. But we're going to fill in the rest of it. W is five hundred pounds per foot. And then L is 15 feet, and it's to the fourth. And then we're all over the 384 and the 1, 9 million. And what wasn't told is that's actually in PSI, so that's pound per inch squared. And then we were given I, which is the 34.66 inches to the fourth. Okay, so this formula is notorious for having units issues. So you can kind of see the top is all in feet, but the bottom is all in inches. So we've got to con do some conversions here. So uh, if you go back to the days of doing ratio, you know, thinking about your fractions, we're just going to start crossing off what cancels each other out. So the pounds cancel each other out. This inch to the squared on the bottom is going to cancel two of the fours over here. This foot on the bottom is going to cancel one of the feet there. So you get feet cubed over inches squared. And we know that the answer is going to be in inches. So we need to convert this baby right here. We're going to convert that feet cubed to inches. So we know that we have 12 inches per foot. And it is going to be cubed so that we get these feet to take these feet away. So we get inches cubed over inches squared, which in the end will give you inches. So when you do the math, you will get 8.64 inches, which is not a lovely number. So let's think about that for a second. This is a 15 foot uh, beam, a three, uh, three by six wood beam that's 15 feet long, and its deflection is 8.64, that's almost nine inches. Mm -hmm. That's way too much I'm deflection. I'm not going in your house if that's Yeah, that's, 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 that. that is my house, actually. That's, that's about the same deflection in my house. Um, uh, clearly, if you had, uh, you know, drywall and plaster would be cracking and breaking. And if you had bricks or something on top of that beam, it would, uh, all the mortar would be broken. Like that's just way too much. So maybe there's a, what would be a typical relationship that we would try sure. to get? So we use two different ones. There's one that's L over 240. And then there's another one L over 360. This one here is usually used for total load. So you're dead plus live. And then this one over here is usually used as for live only. Those are our kind of rules of thumb. There are times where we will use other values. You know, for masonry, we use something different. But these are your pretty typical ones. Yeah, so these are the numbers you'll see. If you if you see it on the exam, it's going to be probably one of these two. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll, it'll tell you either for the total load or for the live load um, and then give you one of those numbers. But what that's essentially saying is that to the total length, you divide it by 240 um, uh, and... Uh, that the the number that comes from that is the the sort of allowable deflection that you're you, that you're going to be able to mm -hmm. um, to go for before it's going to start to crack and you yeah. know, and, do and when other you problems. when you actually do figure out the L over two forty, it's only three quarters of an inch. Right, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. Like you know, three quarters of an inch is still a fair amount of deflection. Mm -hmm. But, you know, things have to move a little bit. If you have a big, big load on something, it's going to deflect a little. And that's, you know, the materials are built to be able to take that. They just can't take something like 8.6 inch deflect. That's just way too much. But if it, if that number had come out to, say, half an inch or five eighths of yeah, an inch or something, fine. it'd be fine. Even if it came out right to three quarters, it'd still be fine. Um, but then there are some very specific situations where you could imagine a question where it's much more higher tolerant. Um, be, uh, because there's a very particular need, um, like the masonry or something, mm -hmm. but, um, the vast majority of them are going to be either this L240 for the total load or L over 360 for the live load. Correct. Yep. So yeah, knowing that we have so much deflection, the, the easiest ways to change those is to 
figure out what's in that denominator and make those bigger. Do you have a question about, uh, could you uh, review how you did the units again, how you converted the units? Oh, yeah. So, so a question about the units. Yeah. So basically when I did the units, I wrote them out all longhand so that I could see what I had in each fraction, if you will. And then I just started using the rule of fractions where if it's in the top, you're going to multiply by one over to, to get it to cross out. And so I was just trying to cross out the different pieces. And so you're doing that both fractions that are within the numerator and as well within as the denominator. The, the, mm -hmm. but as well as then also between the numerator and the denominator. Correct. So yep. it's, it's happening at both levels I, within the formula and also the overall. formula. Yes, that's very true. Um, yeah, that's one of those things you do it a few times and it'll, you'll get reminded of it, but it's a, uh, it's a tricky, yeah, it takes, uh, a while. takes a little while to get, get used to that. Um, and this is one of those ones that is uh, always uh, problematic for, I mean, like if you're going to have mm -hmm. trouble on units, it's going to be in a deflection one because yep. it's just sort of a nature of it. But before we move on, let's take a quick second, just sort of talk about um, this, this formula a little bit. Like w this thing can seem um, very, very complicated and they may ask you to, to do a full uh, calculation out. But it's also possible that they may ask a question that you can actually answer just from understanding the, the issue here. So let's say, for example, we just figured out that, that this particular example just is, is way, uh, is just not strong enough to, to handle mm -hmm. um, and it's going to have way too much deflection. So what could we do to fix this problem? Sure. So there's a couple different things we could do. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at that formula. Uh, uh, you know, any one of those numbers, the, the five and the three eighty four, all gotta all gotta stay because yeah, those those are those. those are constants. But we could mess with the W, we could mess with the L, we could mess with the E, we could mess with the I. So uh, let's start with the E. Um, like, what could we do? Uh, we could go to a different material that had sure could. a uh, different uh, modulus of elasticity. Yeah, steel is going to be much stronger than that. So if we went for, to a steel um, in in place of this wood, that the modulus elasticity for that is going to be significantly higher, mm -hmm. which means that that denominator is going to be higher, which means that the deflection, that the fr the overall fraction, is going to be much smaller. Yep. So going to steel would be one way to think about this. We could also, the three by six is a sort of reasonable shape, but uh, with the eye, we could also go with a just maybe a much deeper yeah. section. Like maybe it's still wood, but maybe it's a, I don't know, a four by 12 or, right. or something like that. So yep. it has a much deeper element. And then that eye is going to be much larger. And then again, the mm -hmm. denominator is going to be larger and therefore the overall fraction is going to be smaller. So you're bringing down the deflection amount. And um, same thing goes with the W and with the L. They, you know, we could say, well, okay, this is all fine, but you just can't load it to 500. You got to find some way to bring that W down, which I don't know how you do that, but that's a, that's a way you could think about it. Um, but the other way to think about it is maybe the L is wrong. Like maybe there has to be a column halfway in between. And so you're actually, instead of being 15 feet, it's seven and a half feet or right. something like that. Right. So very quickly, just once you understand what those letters are standing for, you can actually answer a lot of questions that would be about, well, what would you do if this was the case? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Let's take a quick look at what our, our friends at home we're friends at home with our <laughs> respondee set. So this one, uh, we look at number nine here and we see that the, um, got the L240, mm -hmm. uh, that looks good. So I figured out the seven, uh, 0.75 inches, the three quarters of an inch. Yeah. Uh, and that first that run five over 384. So everything in that first line looks pretty good, but came out with a different number. Yeah. So we, we think there might just be a, a, a bit of a, Maybe a calculator error. I, I know my fingers get fat sometimes and I punch the wrong button. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but the, but everything, all the setup looks right, but then uh, something's not quite right in the final follow through. It might be, a, maybe it's a units thing, um, but uh, I think it's probably just a calculator error.